Hey guys, welcome back into our Python programming series. In this episode, we'll go ahead and explore one of the key concepts of key topic, not just with the Python, but with a lot of programming language, which is functions. Before we really deep dive or explore the functions uh, with the Python, let's understand the use of the functions really. Why do you want to use the function? into your program if you see in previous some of the previous episode we talked about okay hey if there's a need to repeat certain line of a code you could probably go ahead and make use of a loop if you want to reiterate or iterate over certain line of a code but let's say if you have written certain line of a code and when you are writing a pretty larger program you probably need to do the same functionality multiple times so one of the way you can do you can write those line of code one time and then whenever you need you can just simply go ahead and copy those line and paste into your larger program. But that would only result in uh, becoming your code become pretty big or monolithic or you know a large line of a code where something is just being repeated over multiple times. So don't you think so it will be a good idea if there is a way we can have those special line or those lines of code written in such a way that you can call them whenever there is a need. So that means you can put those line of code it becomes your reusable line of a code and it's very well organized and it's doing one particular task for you. And that's the whole idea when it comes to the function. Function kind of provides a better modularity for your application or to your programs that you are writing. And re it's really the whole idea of code reusability. That means instead of just doing a copy paste your code, you can probably just go ahead and refer back to the program or the line of course that you have written. And believe me, knowingly or unknowingly, we have used a lot of functions so far. For example, the print function that we have been using to print a certain message or certain values or variables, we are making use of the function, but that function is not created by us, it's provided by Python. So that's the reason that function is called built-in function. So in this episode, we will go ahead and see how we can write our own function and when we write our own functions, these are called user defined function. When you are defining a function, there is a certain format or syntax that we need to pay attention or follow. And as we progress, I will show you the different type of functions as kind of, you know, high level, we'll go ahead and see how do you define a function, call a function, parameters, different type of parameters, the written statement and the variables that we're going to work within the Python. So without any due delay, let's go ahead and jump directly to our IDE and let's go ahead and start writing our first function. So to create a function or to create a user defined function, we make use of something called def. Def really says define. It's using the def keyword. We can go ahead and define our function. Def expects you to provide a name of a function. So let's call it whatever the function name that you like to use. I can call it my underscore function one. And then we're using parentheses followed by columns. And now the our block of code is being indented. Now within this function, we can go ahead and write any line of code that you desire. So I will just simply go ahead and let's create a two variables here. I'll say X is equals to 10 y is equals to 20 and then we say z is equals to x plus y and once that is done we are just simply doing a print z so if you see that we went ahead and created a function the name of the function is my function one and within this function one we went ahead and wrote a couple line of a code where we have defined a couple of variables we are doing the sum of those two variables and finally we are making use of the built-in function print and we are printing the sum of those two numbers now this is good now you have defined a function into your program so defining a functions means okay hey the function is there those lines of codes are there but these line of code if at this stage if i you try to execute run this program let me go ahead and do that anyway so let me go ahead and quickly execute uh, this line of code here and you would see there is no result the the reason because there is no result is we have just created a program but to really execute a program, we need to call our function. So if we don't call the function, the function will not, or the lines within the function will not be executed. So we need to specifically call the function. So to call the function within the main body of program, we can go ahead and simply type the name of the function. The name of the function is my underscore function one. So this my underscore function one is indented at the same level as def. So that means here we have just defined our function 
and the function name is my underscore function one and now on the line number eight we are calling this function my underscore function one so when we call a function we are saying okay hey function whatever is inside the statement of line of code i like these lines of code to be executed so now let's go ahead and try running this program again and this time we would see the result being 30 because we went ahead and called this function and when we went inside the function these two variables were created their sum was computed and finally the value was printed on the screen. So this is just a very basic example of writing your own function and calling your own function. Now there are maybe if you see in this program, uh, there is one issue if you kind of re see here. If you want to go ahead and compute the sum of two different numbers, we would need to just simply go ahead and change the value of x and y to some different number. Don't you think so? It would be a good idea if there is any way when we call this function and if I can specify the values that I want and I want the sum of those two values be computed and the result to be printed on the screen. That's where the whole idea of the parameters or the functional arguments comes into the picture. So parameter of functional arguments are the information that can be passed to your function and we pass these values or the information to the function these are called parameters. And we'll go ahead and explore a different type of a parameter or functional argument. If I just quickly glance back to our topic, there are a couple type of functional arguments or parameter that we can pass to a function. There is something called a required argument. Then the another one is called keyword argument. There is one more by name default argument. Last but not the least is the variable length argument. So let's go ahead and take a look at our required argument. As the name kind of indicates, okay, here required means something which is required. So let's go ahead and change this function to slightly different. Now what I'm saying, okay, hey, we are defining this function, my function one, but in this function one, we are passing two variables, x comma y. So now we are defining a function. In this function, we have passed two parameters or two required arguments, uh, or these are also called the positional values, the uh, positions x comma y. Now, within this x comma y, we'll just go ahead and simply say, okay, hey, now we don't need these local variables. So I'll go ahead and delete these two local variables. And we are just simply creating another variable z. And within the z, we are saying, okay, hey, whatever the x is being passed here, this x refers to this, and this y refers to this y over here. And then we are printing the value of z. Now, if you see last time when we called this function, this function had no parameters requirement. So now what happens if you try to run this program without passing any parameter? And let me go ahead and just it clearly says there is a type error, okay? Because my function is miss, missing two required positional arguments. So it clearly says, okay, hey, there are two because there are two variables x and y, and those are two required positional arguments. So that when it says a positional argument, they kind of indicates the position, the first value being assigned to x and the second value being assigned to y. So if, because we have not passed these two required parameter and that's the reason we see this type error. So now let's try passing some value to these variables. So we'll go ahead and say x is equals to 10 and y is equals to 10. So when I say x is equal to 10, because it clearly says positional arguments. So positional argument indicates the first value that you pass is being assigned to the first parameter that is being passed to the function. That means this value x 10 is being assigned to this variable x while the second value then is being assigned to your variable y. Now let's go ahead and try rerunning this program. And this time we see an as expected output of 20. What happens if you try to pass more than two arguments? Let's try passing another argument value 30 here. And let's try rerunning this program one more time. And again, the program clearly says, okay, here there's a type error because it takes two positional argument, but three were given. So it clearly indicates, hey, your program or the function was expecting only two positional arguments, but we went ahead and provided three. So that is the reason we are seeing this type error. So we can go ahead and remove this third argument and we can try rerunning this program with some different value. And as you can see, the program works fine without any problem. The another type of argument or the parameter that we can pass to a function are called keyword arguments. So the key keyword argument is something like this. So let me go ahead and demonstrate that with the help of a function quickly. So we'll go ahead and uh, define a function. Let's call it again, my func one. And within this my func, we are passing two uh, parameters. The first parameter being name and the second parameter is being age. 
and whatever is being passed to name and age we just simply want to go ahead and print that so we'll say print name and the name that is being entered will just point back to the above variable and same same thing we'll do the for the age variable so now let's go ahead and say here age and once that is done our for, uh, function definition is done now let's go ahead and try to call this function so our function is my func so now the my func is again expecting two positional arguments so now let's see what happens if i go ahead and say the name being name being mike comma and the age being 30 now let's try running this program so it clearly says okay hey mike is being assigned to the variable name name while 30 is being assigned to age and that's how this is being printed but what happens let's say if we do something like this instead of providing name first we go ahead and type the age first and followed by a name now if i go ahead and execute this program even though we provided the two correct uh, number of required arguments but the expected result is wrong because the name is definitely not 30 and age is not rob the reason because the positional arguments follows the order that the 30 is being assigned to name while this rob is being assigned to age while that's not correct that's where we can make use of the keyword argument that way we are not relying on this order so how we can do that so i can just simply say okay hey this age when i'm sending this age is 30 and the name is rob now we can provide in any order that you want so if you take a look when we have passed these things now this age is refers to this particular age and the value being assigned here is 30 this name refers to this name and the value being assigned is rob and now we have a correct output this input or these parameters are called as keyword arguments so using the keyword arguments uh, we are not relying on the order of the function when we created or the parameter order you can pass them in any order it will go ahead and work and again we can just simply go ahead and do something like this name is equals to 30 and you can just say the age being 30 here and now again it says okay hey positional arguments keyword follows keyword argument now in this case we tried passing one argument as the keyword argument and second one is the positional argument and we cannot do a mix and match and that's what i wanted to show you here that if you are doing a keyword argument all needs to be keyword argument so now we can go ahead and change it to ages equals 30 now retry rerunning the program again and that's the whole idea behind using the keyword arguments but what happens if in this program uh, let's say i'm just only providing i'll go back to the positional one just to indicate uh, i'll go ahead and only provide one parameter and now let's go ahead and rerunning this program we know it's going to be an error because it clearly says okay hey there is only one and it was definitely looking for another one which is eight so how do you handle some of these errors or some of these conditions where a user forgot to provide the needed number of uh, arguments or needed number of uh, input for your function so that's where where the default parameters or the default arguments really comes into handy so in this case we are saying okay hey for my function i'm expecting two parameters which are name and age but let's say if the end user only enters the name i can go ahead and assign a default age so during the definition of the function we can use the equal sign and define a default value so, so let's say the default value being 30. so now if i go ahead and re-execute this program this time there is no error because the rob is being assigned to name but we didn't provide any value for the age because there was no value was provided to the age when we call the function this function ended up taking the default argument from the function definition and that's the reason we seen the output age being 30 and there is no reason this time so this kind of argument is known as your default argument so let's say what happened we have a default age of 30 and we can go ahead and specify age to our function when we are calling and you can see the result being 40 so that means when you call a function with a value that will override the default default will only come into the picture when we have not specified any value for that particular positional argument so what happens in this case if we do 40 but we have not specified anything for the name will end up now if you take a look here because now this becomes the positional argument the 40 is being assigned to the name and for age it went ahead and picked up a default value of 30 but what happens if we don't specify 40 also again we'll have an error because it was expecting at least one positional argument and that was for name uh, because for age we have configured a default argument 
if you want to handle this thing for the name also we can go ahead and configure a default argument or default value for the name uh, parameter also hopefully uh, you, you get the idea now let's before we go ahead and explore the last type of argument which are variable length argument let's go ahead and explore uh, something else so now we'll go ahead and create another function uh, we'll just simply say my sum so in this case we will go ahead and uh, we'll pass two parameter to this function and whatever those two values being passed we want to compute the sum of those two number and return that result back to our caller or the calling from wherever we have called our function so we can say simply z is equals to x plus y and now we have computed the sum of x and y now we can make use of the return keyword to return this value back to the caller so now let's see what happens now we will go ahead and call this function my sum and we'll pass two values here if i go ahead and run this program at this stage what happened there is nothing there's no result on the screen the reason because within the function we don't have any print statement this function is only computing the sum of those two numbers and returning the computed result back to the caller the, but the caller is not handling that in any way so we can define here we can say okay hey a x is equals to my sum so that means whatever this my sum function is returning the value go ahead and store that values in the x and now we can go ahead and print the value of x here now let's try rerunning this program one more time and this time we have a result of 30 so if you see the use of the return statement we can make use of the return statement to return a value from a function back to the caller and based on this we can take any further actions or we can do any other action we can just instead of doing z is equals to x plus v we can just simply go ahead and uh, do that here itself x return x plus y so there is no difference between the previous one and this one and again uh, instead of assigning the value if you don't want to do any further action we can just wrap this my function within our print function that means whatever this function is returning just simply go ahead and print that value now we can go ahead and exit and we have the same result of being 30 being displayed on the screen so hopefully you get the idea or the usage of the the return statement so if we quickly glance back to our topic uh, well, let's take a look also at the scope of the variables within a function so let's quickly jump back and we will go ahead and explore the scope of the variables uh, within the function so when I say the scope of variable within functions, there are two type of variable uh, that do exist. One is something called global variables, another called something local variable. As the name kind of indicates, hey, global variables are global that are accessible to the main of your program as well as within the function. But sometimes you end up declaring some extra variables within the functions. Their scope is only within that function. So that means out of outside of a function, we cannot access uh, those variables. And that is the whole idea behind uh, using those local versus the global variable. Uh, to quickly demonstrate, let's go ahead and if in this case, uh, let me go ahead and change this program quickly. And then we'll say z equals to x plus y. And also on the top of the screen, we created a variable z where we are storing the value being zero here. Now, if I go ahead and print the value of this z over here, and now we, let me just go ahead and call my sum on 10 comma 20, and then we'll just simply call, call, go ahead and call z one more time. So now, let me go ahead and put some message in function. In main program and now let's go ahead and rerun our program quickly and as you can see we went ahead and declared a variable on top of our program which says z is equals to zero so here we are creating z as a global type of variable which is accessible throughout wherever we need this one and now within the function we also declared a variable that stores the computation or the sum of these two variable x and y and when we are printing this z that's the result why it's 30 but when we call the same z in the main body it says z equals to zero because this z is a life cycle or the scope was only limited within this function that means the well this value is not accessible or this variable z is different from this variable z that's the whole idea so when you are working with the variables within a function or outside the function 
do pay attention to their scope are they local variables or are they global variables so based on that uh, you can go ahead and make use of these different variables and different things now let's jump back onto our the last type of argument which are the variable length argument if you have seen so far all the examples or so far the functions that we have created we have specified a definite number of arguments one two three four or so but there may be a situation or time when you are working with a function and you really don't know how many inputs a user can do or how many inputs probably this function can have in that case we cannot definitely define the number of positional arguments or the keyword arguments so in that case the scope is pretty wide so we need a way where we can take any number of arguments or any number of keyword arguments to our function and based on that we can go ahead and uh, compute something let's go ahead and change this program a little bit so i'm going to remove all of these variables so we don't need these variables and now let's talk about the variable length argument so far you have seen all the functions and variables that we have worked with. Uh, there is always a fixed number of arguments that we have passed to our function. It could be 1, 2, 3 and, and so on. But there may be some time need or situation where we don't know how many input a user can pass to certain function. But we really want to handle all those inputs and that's where this variable length arguments really comes handy uh, that where we can make use of. So let's go back and jump out onto our IDE and let's take a look of the variable length number of argument. We'll go ahead and define a function. We'll call it again my underscore function one. And within this function uh, so far we had passed the definite number of arguments. Now we are really handling or we are dealing with the indefinite number of argument. We really don't know how many arguments a user can pass. To really handle or to really indicate that okay the arguments we can make use of a variable or a keyword called args which really says argument and because we don't really know the number of arguments we can proceed this with an asterisk symbol that kind of indicates okay hey we can have n number of uh, arguments uh, being as an in, uh, input parameters to this function now we have the n number of arguments uh, to this function now what do we do we can just simply take those arguments and we can just try to print all the past arguments to our function. So you can make use of again the for loop and we'll say for i and the arguments that are being passed to our function. Just simply go ahead and print those arguments on the screen. Now we can call the function by calling the function name. And now in the arguments we can pass any argument that you want. So let's go ahead and pass two argument and see what happens. Now let me go ahead on this program. And the system went and printed 10 and 20. Now call the program with more number of arguments. And let's go ahead and re-execute this program. And as you can see, the, our function is capable of handling any number of arguments that we are passing to, to this function. And thanks to this variable length argument. So again, this arg is just a name that you can specify any name that you like. The main thing here is the asterisk symbol or the star symbol that indicates n number of arguments. And I would highly encourage you to leave it to the args because this is kind of the standard that being used out through a lot of Python programming. So when you are reading someone else's code, you know, okay, hey, we are dealing with here the variable length arguments. Again, uh, that's a, just a choice of word. You can use any other word that you like. But the whole idea behind the star arg is to handle the variable length number of argument. So the same way, uh, the way we handled, there is, there is one more thing I want you to pay attention the argument kind of is uh, returns is a tuple when you work with an argument it really returns a tuple so just to show you that what i mean so let's go ahead and just do a print on our args and go ahead and rerun this program and you would see we there's a tuple being returned so that means when the arguments those are being passed the function really returns those argument in the form of a tuple something to keep in mind okay when you are working with the uh, these arguments or the positional arguments. So just like with the positional arguments, we had worked earlier with the keyword argument. So same way to handle n number of or you know unlimited number of undefined or we really don't know the number of keyword arguments, we can go ahead and make use of the something like this. Let me go ahead and show you star star keyword arguments. So here the star star kind of indicates really okay hey we are working with the keyword arguments here and the keyword arguments when we work with the keyword arguments 
keyword arguments really returns a dictionary. So that means you can now go ahead and pass any number of keyword arguments and you can go ahead and print those keyword arguments. And just to really demonstrate, let me go ahead and remove the arguments this time. And then we'll see another example and we'll go ahead and print this keyword arguments. Keyword arguments and let me just take off our for loop for the time being. Uh, we'll go ahead and now when we are calling this keyword argument, this function, as I said, the keyword arguments, you would need to specify a key and value pair. And if you recall from our keyword argument, we had a name equals to Rob and age equals to 30. So the name and age, those were the keys and the values were their respective names and the age that we had specified. We can go ahead and do the same thing. Now we are providing a keyword argument and the key here we are saying fruit being orange. I can go ahead and specify another class equals to MBA. And now let's try running. Uh, sorry, I can't use the class. This is a reserved keyword. So I'll just say my underscore class. And now let's try running. And as you can see, the result, the keywords that we are passing, this, these are a dictionary. So that means we have a key and there is a corresponding value that you can go ahead and make use. And again, to pass the compositional key or the keyword arguments, you would have to use star star. Again, the keyword arguments, you could use any other name. This is one of the standard name being used. Again, you can combine your positional argument using the star args and your keyword arguments using your star star K args. And that way you can handle the variable length number of arguments into your program. Again, you know, that's what conclude this episode. Uh, but function is such an important thing. I would strongly suggest you to spend a good amount of time working with these different type of uh, parameters or arguments and do strongly spend some time into your program, uh, especially working with function. That'll be all for this episode. I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you.